So one thing that puzzles a lot of people when starting their edits in Lightroom is the relationship between the whites and the highlight sliders. I think it's often overlooked and almost never really explained. It's a bit of a difficult thing to explain, which is probably why many people don't go into it, but I'm going to attempt to do my best to show their relationship with each other and how they can be used when editing. Most often you'll see tutorials where someone just runs through their edits, dragging these sliders around until it looks good. And you know, then they'll say, oh, you know, that's my editing process and whatever. And that's totally fine, but I think it's really important to better understand what each one, each, each one of the sliders is really doing. So hopefully this will help you better understand how they work together and what each one is really doing. Everything I explain here can really be applied the same way to the blacks and shadow sliders, but right now I'll be focusing only on the whites and highlights. Now, a lot of people go into editing with the entirely wrong perception of what each of these sliders is doing. And for good reason, because honestly, it's kind of confusing when you really start looking at them in detail. So let's start with the white slider because this is really where you're going to be starting a lot of your edits anyway. Now, the first key thing that I'd like to point out is that the white slider affects a much wider tonal range than the highlight slider. And we need to remember this. Now, it, it almost doesn't make much sense when you look at your histogram up here, because you look at the histogram and you look at your whites, your whites are in these, this little area here, your highlights are this bigger area here, then you got your mid-tones, your shadows, your blacks, but it doesn't really correlate when we're talking about the sliders versus looking at these little sections up here and, and how it all works. But I think you'll start to understand what I mean by that as we get further into this, because they do all correlate to each other. Obviously they, they work together, but not in the way that a lot of people think. But just know that adjusting your white slider will basically affect the overall exposure of your image in a less extreme way than the exposure slider at the top. So essentially what the white slider does is it sets the white point for your image, meaning you're pretty much telling Lightroom, hey, this is where I want the brightest parts of this image to be capped at. I don't want anything to go above this level into pure white. Now I'm talking about pure white and, and what pure white means is that all or one of our color channels are clipped, overexposed, blown out, however you'd like to say it. And we can see this visually, we can see a visual representation by holding down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac. And we hold that down while we drag our white slider up. And you'll start to see as we drag this up, I'm starting to get these little pieces here that are, that are clipping. And you see that some of them are yellow, some of them are red, some are white. And if I drag further, we start to see blue. Now, what the colors mean is that we're clipping in that color channel. And what white means is that we're clipping in all the color channels. And if I let go of this, you see all this clipping that we've done. Now the image is going to be super bright and look terrible. So essentially, we want to do our best to avoid too much clipping though that's always going to be an artistic decision that you need to make how much clipping you really want or if you want no clipping at all it's you know photography is an art and i don't want to put anyone into this box of don't do this or don't do that i'm just giving general guidelines so one thing that we need to remember about the white slider though and i think one of the most overlooked things when people are showing an editing process is that while we're setting our white point, as I mentioned earlier, we're also increasing the overall brightness of the image since the white slider affects a much wider tonal range than the highlight slider. And we can basically think of it like this. Our highlight slider will be affecting just the brightest parts. So if we look up here at the histogram and we see this is our highlight section. If I drag my highlight slider right and left, you see that it's really only moving those 
pieces, mostly in the highlights. It does trail off a little bit into the white points, really just moving the white point. If I move my white slider, however, you'll see that a lot of this overall in the histogram moves. I mean, we're getting the white point, the highlights, the midtones, and even a little bit of the shadows all moving with the white point. And that's because, like I said, it's almost like we're adjusting our exposure, but not as extreme. And like I said, again, because our white point, our white slider affects a much wider tonal range than the highlight slider. The white slider is telling Lightroom where we want our brightest white to be kept. So one thing we need to know is that by setting a proper white point, by using our white slider, this helps ensure that you have maximized the dynamic range in your image and helps provide strong contrast, which makes the image visually pop. And we wanna make use of a full dynamic range. Well, again, creative decision, but for the most part, we'll generally want to make the most of the dynamic range that we have in an image. I see way too many people push the white point using the white slider completely unnecessarily. You should really only stick to using the white slider quite gently, or when you have an underexposed image or an overexposed image, you can push it a bit more in either direction. If your image is already exposed bright enough and properly, you're really not going to be wanting to push this very far if you already have the dynamic range. So really quick, let's go over this. So where is our white point on the histogram? So if we look at our histogram, you'll see this little tail end right here, okay, where this drops off. Now that is where our white point is currently capped at. So when I drag the white point, you'll see that I can take it over to the right until it just basically barely touches this right hand wall. And that's increased my white point and brightened up the overall image, which initially was a little bit underexposed and now it's more properly exposed. And of course we have a little bit of brightness in the clouds, we'll get to that in a second too. Let's go over this a little bit more so we can better understand how the white point and the highlight sliders, how the white slider and how the highlight slider can, they really work together. So as I mentioned earlier, the white slider sets your white point. And now what this white point is doing is it's telling the highlights, it's telling Lightroom, hey, we don't want anything to go above this white point. So if I drag my highlight slider, it's not going to be able to push past that white point that we've set. Now I'm going to do a bit of an extreme example of it to really show you how this is working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white point and I'm going to drag it all the way down here. So now we have our white point sitting right here. You can see right where this little tail ends right here. That's where our white point is capped at right now. And I'll zoom in right here so you can see. This is where our white point is capped at right now. So our highlights, we wanna look for our highlight peaks. So right here, you can see this point right here where it comes up right before this tail end starts dipping out. This is the peak of our highlight right here, okay? This is what Lightroom is thinking. Well, these are the brightest spots. These are the brightest highlights. So when I drag my highlights, I want you to pay attention to where this tail is right here. And when I drag my highlights, that peak of these highlights is not going to go past that point. Now it might trail a little bit past it because it's not entirely like a, a completely set solid line. There's a little bit of feathering happening between that line. It's not like this extremely defined line. So you might see it go a tiny bit past that or a tiny bit under that. It's not going to be exactly on that point. I'm gonna give one more example so we can see this even more. I'm gonna take my exposure down so that my white point actually, the tail, the tail end of my white point lines up with the very edge of where the brightest part of my midtones ends. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my highlights up and I want you to watch this point again when I bring my highlights up. It, it comes right to, right about to 
that edge of that midtone. It's not pushing further. And I took my highlights and I increased them 100% as far as I can go. And essentially that is how the white point and the highlight sliders work together. And a lot of people just overlook this and don't think about it and what these sliders are really doing. And I think by knowing what these sliders are doing, you can make better use of them in your editing process. So basically the way the highlight slider works in connection with the white slider is that the highlight slider will not push pixels past that predetermined white point that we set earlier when we were setting our white point. We also need to remember, like I mentioned, is that the highlights affect a much smaller tonal range than the white slider. They really focus on just those brighter areas. Now, it's most common that you'll use your highlight slider to bring back detail in the brighter areas of an image after setting your white point. Like uh, when I set my white point here. So I'm holding Alt again, uh, Option on Mac, but I'm holding Alt until I can push my white point, if you look at the histogram up top, up to the edge, right to where it's about to be clipping, and then I can back it off a little bit just so it's not clipping. Now my white point is hitting right there, right on that edge, but it's not clipping yet. It has, however, brightened my image. So now I have some more of that contrast. I have more dynamic range that I'm working with. Now, generally, you would use your highlight slider to bring back some of the detail in spots like the clouds that seem like they're too bright. They almost look like they're overexposed or blown out, but we know by looking at our histogram, that's not the case. They're bright though. So we can take our highlight slider down and we can start working on bringing some of that detail back. Now remember, we set our white point where we want those brightest parts of our image to be. And I showed you kind of how the white slider and the highlight slider work together where we set our white point and now when we drag our highlights, we're not affecting things that we don't want the highlights to affect, which means some brightness in the grass and stuff like that is not going to be affected by taking the highlight slider down. If you can see, if you look at the grass, it's not being affected. I can drag the highlight slider all the way in either direction, but that brightness in the grass is staying. And that's what I want. I want that brightness in the grass, but I don't want these clouds to be so bright. So I can take the highlight slider down a little bit until I start seeing some of that detail back in the clouds and I'm not affecting, I'm not over affecting things. So now I brought some detail back in the clouds and I can look at it before and after. It's a little bit brighter, more contrast, more dynamic range. Now, like I said, with it being most common that you would use your highlight slider like this, it's not always the case. In fact, in a lot of cases, a lot of this just might be thrown out completely and whatever you decide creatively is just what goes because art. But there are cases where you may want to raise the highlight slider, like when you're trying to enhance the glow of a sunset where you really don't want to be bringing back detail, but rather enhancing the bright glowing feel from the sun, or if you're going for a more high key image look. Now you're probably thinking, okay, well, it, the image still kind of lacks contrast. You say it's bringing back bringing contrast and, and dynamic range and making it pop, but it's really not. Well, it is, it's not a lot, but it is, it's, it's our starting point. And really there are a lot of other techniques that are involved in the editing process that make an image pop using dodging and burning and using the color mixer and color grading and the tone curve and things like that. I'm not going to go into all of that in this video, I mean, there's there's so much more. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into any of that. I'm really just focusing on the whites and highlights sliders. So, but yeah, you're probably thinking, okay, well now much contrast. So this is where the blacks and the shadows sliders would come in. And like I said earlier in this video, the blacks and the shadow sliders are pretty much equivalent to the whites and highlight sliders, with a couple very small differences. Uh, really just one small difference, I guess. Um, and I want to go over that really quick. So essentially you would do the same thing with the blacks and shadow sliders. So again, we can hold alt down and we can take the black slider down until we start seeing these clipping, uh, these areas clipping. Now with the black slider, you can be much more extreme with how far you want to push it. It really depends on how dark of an image you want. 
I could push it all the way down here and then have a very dark, very contrasty dark image. I don't really like that. I would probably bring it somewhere around here just to bring some more darkness into it, maybe even less than that, but just a little bit. And then the shadow slider, I would bring up instead of down. And if you notice, these kind of work opposite. Your white slider goes up, your black slider goes down, your highlight slider goes down, your shadow slider goes up. And it doesn't need to be this way. Like I said, it's all creative decision. Uh, you know, you could be like, totally like, I don't want any black level at all, but I want some shadows and drag them the totally opposite way and create a softer look. It, it's all creative decision. But what I'm gonna do for this image is I'm gonna drag my black level, yeah, down somewhere around there and then bring my shadows up to bring a little bit more of that brightness in, but still kind of retain that contrast. And it's it comes down to a game of just balancing, finding what you like for a specific image and finding a good balance of what you like. Like now maybe I think my highlights are too dark so I could bring my highlights back up. Now remember, I can bring these all the way up here and yeah, it's gonna start clipping because it pushes my white point into the clipping area, but it's not overly clipping. And I can push it quite a bit without it clipping. So let's say I maybe want my clouds to be brighter and that adds a little bit more contrast. I kind of like them a little bit lower with more detail. And what I would do later is I'd probably bring more contrast and, and interest to the image by using things like dodging and burning and other techniques. But again, I'm not going to go over all of that in this video. Anyway, that's the general bit of how the whites and highlight sliders really work in Lightroom. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to go over today. I hope this helped a little bit and I hope I did okay with the explanations. If you have any questions, please just leave them in the comments below. And if there's anything else you'd like to see in Lightroom, let me know and I'll do my best to not completely suck at making a video for it.